Hello everybody, my name is Alex Thompson Sanchez and today we will be working on the song Eric Wiss Journey. The first thing that we're going to do today is warm up with the C, D, and G scale just like in the last video. However, let us start with the C major scale. Here we go. Now we are going to work on the D major scale. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. The last scale that we're going to work on is the G major scale. In the G major scale, we're going to do a little bit of a challenge. The first time we're going to go at normal speed, the second time we're going to go at double speed. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> The first section that we're going to look at today is measures 1 to 29. And in this section, we have three things that we want to work on. The first thing is keeping time. The second thing is making sure, in measure 1 especially, to accent the first beat, not the second beat. And the third thing that we want to do is slur the quarter notes. First long, second staccato. And I will demonstrate this in just a minute in measure 4. Now I'm going to play measures 1 through 29 of Eric Wish journey. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, go. <laughs> to work on is especially in the first measure, the second beat tends to be accented. We don't want that. We want the first beat, as we can see in the music, the first beat is the beat that is accented. Therefore, we want it to be as so. Now in measures 4, 8, and 12, we have a good example of a long short, short, long short, short. Now, as we can see in the first beat to the second beat, we have a tie as well. So that means that they're going to be in the both in the same bow. However, the second and the third notes are both super staccato. Measure eight. Measure 12. Not. And not. But. All right, now if we look at measures 29 to 33, I'm going to go ahead and play these few measures for you. And pay attention to where I'm putting the accents. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm going to play measures 33 to 37, and I want you to pay attention that all in measures 33, 34, and 35, that the half notes and then the quarter notes that are following the half notes are all the same length. There's not going to be long, short, long, short, but rather a good, healthy amount of note, every single note. One, two, three. <laughs> Let's take a look 
at measures 36 through 45. As you may notice, we may have the melody a little bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that with the metronome. One, two, three. <laughs> Now, because we have the melody section here, the eighth note should be longer and a little bit more connected. They should not all be staccato. So, for example, in measures 44 and 45, I'm going to give you a bad example. Here's the right way to play that, especially since we have the melody and we want it to feel a lot more full. Now, in measures 37 and 45, we can see that the first note is staccato. So we want to execute that properly by making the first note super short and the rest of the notes a good length. So since this is our solo, once again, we want to have a big and full sound. However, we do not want that first note of both measure 37 and 45 to be too long. Here's measure 45. All right, now in measure 42, if you look at, take a close look at measure, measure 42, we have a string crossing. So the easy thing with the string crossing is that they're not on the same fingering. So you go from the one, which is on the E on the D string, to the two, which is the C on the A string. Therefore, we can really have both of these fingers down before we even play the string crossing. Here's a bad example. As you can see, my bow was a little bit caught off guard because I was trying to concentrate on my fingers. If we have both of those fingers down already, because we can actually play them both together, we don't have to focus on what we're doing with the fingers yet. We can focus on what we're doing with the bow. As little bit of as movement as possible. One, two, three. Now the last part of this section that we really want to focus on is in measure 44. Again, you can see that we have a breath, which is also a retake. So I'm going to go ahead and play from two measures before measure 44. And I'm going to show you to how to properly execute this retake. Measure 42, one, two, three. Now if you look at measures 49 through 53, we have a huge crescendo. Now during this huge crescendo, we want to start as quietly as possible so that we can grow and make a big effect of that big crescendo into the forte. Here's a good example. As you can see, I started from very, very quiet and I grew all the way to where I needed to be. measure 70 until the end. Now I'm not going to play this whole thing but I want you to I'm going to go ahead and play measure 71 through 83 and I want you to just really pay attention to quite a few quite a few of the things that I do. Here's a pickup to measure 71 with a metronome at 130. One, two. <laughs> to pay attention to is the slurs or the, the, the ties going into the next bars. So for example, in measure 71, we have a, ha a dotted half note that goes into a quarter note, right? So I want us to take a look and try not to make our bow movement any more than it has to be. A bad example of this could most definitely be that we lead into that first beat um, of the tie and make it emphasized when it should not be emphasized, like so. What we want to do instead is try to make these as even as possible. I'm going to go ahead and play measure 71 and 73 and show you how the bow needs to be even so that there's no emphasis on the tie notes. As you can 
see there was no emphasis or no leading into those notes because those notes are not supposed to be led into. There is no accents, there is no emphases, and there are no staccatos. We do not want to lead into those notes. The other thing that we want to really focus on is the slurred bow crosses. We have a few of these notes that are moving into the other notes. So especially in measure 70, for example, we have a two eighth notes that are slurred string crossings. So the biggest thing that we want to think about when we do a bowed string crossing is really keeping the bow as closely between the two notes as we can, as between the two strings as we can, so that there's no hitting other strings or any other notes when you try to do this. So if you look at my bow, it just hardly moves. I want to think about it really sitting in between the two notes so that it can just barely touch the G string and it can just barely touch the A D string, but we can do that with a flawless execution. So there we have it. That is Eric West, everybody, Eric's journey. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this video and I will see you in another video soon.